So we're going to take a look at the brand new AS Val, which is unlocked at tier 31 in this season six battle pass. We're going to take a look at the overall recoil, the damage profile and where it actually fits within the game. Is this something that people use in hardcore multiplayer Warzone, or none of the above? I've had the opportunity to max it out, test various things. So we're going to look into all that type of stuff. If you enjoy the video in any way, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. And if you're interested in seeing even more gameplay with this weapon, you can go ahead and check out my second channel, which is just Jgod Plays near the top of the description. Let's go ahead and get into the sponsored segment of this video. This is a video sponsored by Frag Pro Shooter, one of the best shooting games of 2020 designed for mobile devices. Almost 50 million players, around 1 million players are playing in Frag every day. You have specific rewards, thanks to the link down in the description to join them. You can build your dream team, choose your favorite characters to build your team of five, among more than 80 characters to collect. And each offers a unique gameplay experience with a specific role and power. During the gameplay, you take your team in and you control one character while the other four are controlled by bots that you can switch when you want. So if you wanna take over another character, you can do so. And that'll allow you to go in access the enemy towers and then destroy those to win. There's also a 2v2 mode that allows you to build a team with one of your friends or a random partner. You can choose up to three characters from a deck of six while your partner will get the other three. And then you can play against another team of two. And whether you're a first time user or you already have the game installed, there are free rewards for you. Thanks to the link down in the description, you'll get one gold chest, 500 coins, 50 diamonds, all worth $6. So thanks again to Frag Pro Shooter for sponsoring the video. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about a few of the different elements that are most important. Obviously with this weapon, it has a built-in integrated suppressor. So obviously there's that part of it. And regardless of what attachment you're using, you're gonna have that integrated bullet suppressor regardless. So you're gonna stay off the minimap, even though it's not listed, it's just a default mechanic as part of the weapon. The other part of it, as far as specialized attachments goes, you have the 10 round mags, which kind of turn into a little bit of DMR, like an SKS or an EBR, somewhere in that, that ballpark, or like we've seen with some of the other weapons that they've added, they get these additional rounds, like the SOCOM rounds, kind of similar to that. And one of the things that we're gonna end up probably gonna be one of the weaknesses of this weapon is the 30 round mag. So the first thing we'll be taking a look at is the overall recoil pattern and which attachments are actually doing what. So here's a look at the individual recoil patterns. Luckily the default mag on this thing is only 20 bullets. Um, so you can kind of see the generic recoil pattern here. It kind of goes a little bit of a curve to the left and then just kind of goes straight up and a little bit to the right. And then when it comes to this first barrel, it's supposed to give you faster aim down sight while ruining your recoil uh, and giving you less bullet velocity. And you can see that the recoil is kind of stretching a little bit further to the left, kind of has a sharper bend, and then it kind of goes back up. Then we got the VLK, which is supposed to help with range, bullet velocity, recoil control, like the standard, you know, long barrel that most weapons will have when you're equipping it to a rifle. Um, and you can see it's not really looking like it's helping out a ton, in my opinion. I feel like it's mostly negligible so with this gun already have a built-in integration i would say that you don't even really need a barrel and we're going to see kind of how, how that works as we go over the damage profile that's not really all that necessary especially when you start treating the weapon more like an smg than a rifle even though it is deadly at pretty much all ranges uh, again the issue ends up being that magazine merc cuts down the recoil significantly the bend doesn't really change much but you can see it's mostly cut off right here instead of going above the door frame ranger very similar we got commando about the same operator looks like it's definitely doing the most so if you're looking to just minimize the recoil as much as possible while taking a little bit more of a penalty in ads speed mostly negligible between them um unless you're just stacked up for ads speed especially since the ads speed on this weapon is already fast at around 234 milliseconds which is significantly faster than pretty much all the rifles. Um, and it's a little bit slower than some of the SMGs. So it's kind of one of those hybrids. Uh, but for me, it leans a little bit more toward the SMG side, even though it's the 13th rifle in the game. Then we got rubberized, which even rubberized is helping more than we're normally used to seeing. And then we have the VLK Strelock, which is actually a stock attachment. And this one is doing a ton. So if you're just looking to reduce the recoil as much as possible, the VLK stray lock and the operator are probably the good combination there. Um, and you'll see kind of how that fits into the class setup. And then we have the, the 10 round mags, which are more of those high caliber 
um, uh, hollow point type rounds that we've seen in pretty much other guns, uh, but a little bit less practical, especially in terms of Warzone. It's okay in multiplayer because you can get that one shot kill, but you might as well use the foul if you're going to do that with significantly more ammo capacity and rate of fire, at least in my opinion. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and take a look at the damage profile. So what's actually cool about this is I kind of guess how the damage profile would work. I'd said it'd probably be very similar to the M13, and it is in the fact that it has just one damage drop off. It goes from one damage at a certain range, it drops off right around 31 meters. We're primarily focusing um, going to be on the SMG version or rifle version of this, um, as you can see here. But I did put that DMR just so you could see how the TTK works in Warzone. The left is the overall time to kill. You get that based off the fire rate, shots to kill, and then how much damage is required to down a player, you get the number of shots to kill. So we have the Kilo, the MP5, when you shoot in the chest. The AS Val does have three different damage profiles, head, chest, and then limbs everywhere else on the body. And then the DMR version actually has limbs, stomach, upper chest, and then headshot. So it has multiple damage and extra damage value in there and an additional damage drop off. So it's a little bit different, but overall you can see these side by side. As you can see here, the Kilo is the least competitive up close when you're comparing to these three different weapons, but it sustains its range the longest um, and has a 60 round mag. Then next up is the MP5, and you can see right here, if you use the DMR and you're getting those chest shots, it's going to kill as fast as the MP5 up close, but you only get 10 bullets, so it's very impractical, um, but that, that TTK carries all the way up to about 48 meters, and that's even without a barrel. So you don't even need a barrel and you'll get that DMR range. As long as you're getting chest shots, five consecutive chest shots, it will be five shots to kill with the DMR. Then when we go to the AS Val, which has an incredibly fast fire rate of a little over 900 rounds per minute, you can see that the TTK is incredibly fast. It melts, it burns through ammo. Sometimes you pull the trigger and it's like, damn, I already ran out of ammo. Even with the 30 round mag, especially with the 20 round, you're gonna run into some issues. So pretty much all the way across here, it is very strong up to about 31 meters, has a damage drop off, but never drops off again. So even if somebody is like 70 meters away, you land all those shots just because you're that accurate, you're gonna be good to go. One thing that I did notice with this one, especially in practice, is as targets get or beyond about 50 meters, even around 40 meters, the 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 bullet velocity is a little bit slower and uh, kind of what we've seen with the Fennec, maybe not that extreme, where the bullets kind of curve down a little bit and don't hit the target quite as fast. So um, I would guess that the bullet velocity is a little bit slower on this weapon. I didn't get an opportunity to test that part out, but but just based off feel, it definitely feels slower than, than pretty much all the other rifles in, in this category. And if you'd like to take a look at how the numbers work out for yourself, I have the different rounds, how long it takes to fire those. You get the number of shots to kill. You plug that in based off the different damage values from zero to 31 meters, 31 plus, pretty much the two different damage values with the ADS speed. And then we have the different uh, multipliers here. We got the, the stomach, chest, head, limb for those different various damage ranges. You just plug it in based off simple math and that's how you end up with that graph that I just showed off. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what would be the best class setup based off of all these different variables and how I recommend using this weapon. It really comes down to, to personal preference. You're gonna kinda have to fill out the gun for yourself. I think the strength of this weapon is to use it as a submachine gun. I know it sounds weird because it is a rifle. It has a built-in integrated suppressor, so that's already a plus. Um, if you wanna choose one of the barrels, that's more power to you, but I think the ranges that you're gonna keep this weapon at, you don't really need that extra range because it basically has rifle range even without that bullet velocity. So as long as you can hit those shots, the bullets are gonna still do some considerable damage. You don't need the extra range, but bullet velocity could help if you're struggling at some of those ranges. So that one's more you gotta kind of pick and choose. Personally, I would either go with the Merc foregrip because it's still one of the best options in terms of hip fire um, and giving you a little bit of recoil control. If you're only worried about recoil control, I would go with that operator foregrip, uh, but personally, Treating this like an SMG, even though it's gonna use rifle ammo, you could use this with the Merc foregrip, and that's how I personally would use that. Ammunition, you gotta go with the 30 round mag. 20 round is not nearly enough, but unfortunately, because of this ammo situation, it's gonna end up with a very similar situation that we ran into with the Fennec, which almost no one uses it unless they're playing solos, and sometimes in duos. As soon as you go to trios or quads, it's kind of taken off the table just for the number of shots to kill. 
Fast fire rate's amazing. The melt factor is amazing, but the ammo just keeps it too much in check. Personally, I would love to see it with the 45 round mag so people would actually use it. It might be a little bit broken, so they'd have to make some tweaks at that point. But personally, it, with the 30 round mag, you're almost never gonna see this unless it's solos in a 1v1 or duos in a 1v2. You're really not gonna see this in trios or quads. It's just not practical. Uh, even though you can make it work, it's not practical in my opinion. Uh, rear grip, you could go with that rubberized if you want a little bit, you know, less recoil. Uh, but I think overall stippled is going to be the way to go. So for the next couple attachments, it's really a matter of preference. I feel like it, it could benefit from having sleight of hand. Um, but overall, I still didn't feel like it was a huge difference there. I would probably go with this VLK Strelock just because it helps with the recoil control, aiming stability, and aim walking steadiness all improved what we saw in the recoil patterns this one helped significantly especially if we're combining that with the merc for example we're going to get very limited recoil and then that can afford us the opportunity to put on maybe a tack laser so that we get this being the best class setup to use it as an smg i really wouldn't use this as a dmr even though some people are going to probably show hey look it does 100 to the head you got to land three headshots in warzone to get those kills um, because it's not a marksman rifle. It just doesn't do enough damage. So you're not going to get that headshot multiplier that the marksman rifles and the sniper rifles get. So it, in my opinion, just not a practical for 10 bullets. Even though the TTK is good, it's an unrealistic TTK. And that ends up being the class setup. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. If you're looking for even more Call of Duty content, go ahead and check out my second channel, which is near the top of the description. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.